Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Thank you for tuning in, watching, or listening, doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it, car, plane, on a train, in a boat, <laughs> next to a moat. I was hoping you were going to say moat. Guys, welcome. <laughs> To the uh, to the podcast episode we've got for you today, we've actually got a lot to talk about. Uh, we're going to be talking about the challenger decks. We've also got a few Ooh. questions from some users uh, that w they would like some answers. So yeah. we're going to hopefully tag that on at the end. We also may kind of throw in some Mulligan rule stuff. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Just to the London Mulligan rule, just to clarify. Right, not the old boring stinky Mulligan not rule. Not the normal crap. Uh, <laughs> anyway, all right. But we of course are going to be kicking off with the random card of the day. In Excuse three, me. two, one. Give me something juicy. Or that. That's fine. <laughs> so we've got Org. Org is what? a 6-6 six, six for 5 with Trample. It says, Org can't attack if defending player controls an untapped creature with power 3 or greater. <laughs> Org can't block creatures with power 3 or greater. Well, this is just bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, this was is... this playable at the time? This was originally in Fallen Empires and then in 5th edition. So was this originally like a playable bomb for a red um, deck? It's 3 and 2 red, just to clarify. That's my only question. I'm going to say probably in limited, but... That like, it's still <laughs> bad, right? Like there's not a really good redeeming quality with, with this. Yeah, so... It's, it's cheap a little bit for God. a 6-6 six, six <laughs> with Trample. It doesn't do anything if they just have a creature with power three or greater. That's the thing. It's so stupid. I guess it can block. It can block them. Unless. So it's they a have... stall card in red is what this amounts to. Well, it can't block creatures with power three or greater. So if it ha if your opponent oh. has one of those. Oh, God. That's so yeah. bad. <laughs> I thought it. It's oh. just terrible. Okay. Yeah. No redeeming quality. This card's nah. bad. Never play it. Yeah. No. I'm like. No, there's nothing I can say about a work that is good. Nope. I like that might be one of the quickest uh, yeah. <laughs> random cards we've ever had. This I, is bad. I prefer to train my orgs. <laughs> you know? Hey, I know what you mean. Because at least they're just vanilla. <laughs> they I'd rather it be vanilla than be worse than vanilla. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway. Vanilla um, over bad. Man, that was a bad one. Yeah, quickest card of the day we've ever had. Anyway. Like we said, we are going to be talking about the Challenger decks today. The 2019 ones have been officially announced uh, yeah. with deck lists, which we are very, very excited about. They are going to be released on April 12th. The MSRP is $30 per deck. Yeah, full stop right there. Uh, the what? The MSRP? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that back? Didn't they just say, though, what, did they just say it was for, like, expansion sets? I don't think they did. I just I'm think they said thinking product they was sealed product was just I thought that it was just expansion sets. Nah, I didn't read anything about expansion Maybe sets. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't think But I they don't, definitely yeah. put an MSRP on this. Yeah, so. 100%. Of, well, in wait, America wait, wait. Now, only. Now, hold on. Does this come out before War of the Spark? Oh. Cuz War of the Spark that's is That's right. That's the, the MSRP first MSRP is, list. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. When do you come out? Um, I mean, this is April 12th. April 12th. So it does. It does come out before War of so the Spark. So that okay. would be why. Okay. Uh, anyway. Cheeky. Cheeky, cheeky, cheeky. If you guys know anything about Challenger decks, uh, you should know that they're awesome. So the last round of these was very, very strong. They were They, they were, were decent. pretty good. They were decent. I mean, they okay. They were decent. They were decent. But uh, they serve the purpose very well, which is to basically provide somewhat competitive decks mm -hmm. right out of the box for a yes. relatively low price uh, that then anybody can go out and actually just play at the FNM. Maybe not win the FNM, right. but maybe probably do fairly well. Uh, if they're if they're experienced enough to know. If they're, they're experienced sure. enough, that is sure, 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 that's sure. definitely true. But uh, this, along with the last round of uh, of these challenger decks, was designed by well, the lead designer was Donald Smith, uh, who gave some context to this. I just want to mention this beforehand. The previous round of challenger decks. They were in the current meta as they made these decks, if I'm not right. mistaken. They were and the, so they were able... They were the Kaladesh I think ones, they right? were the Kaladesh, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah, yeah. And so they were basically able to tailor the decks to the current meta as best they could. Sure. Whereas in this instance, they actually built these decks during Guilds of Ravnica, not Ravnica Allegiance. And so they may not be... They may be a little old school. 
for the current meta is what I would say. Ish. Ish. Yeah. Not hugely in some <laughs> cases, I will say, but right. uh, a couple of them were decks that we definitely saw more of uh, a few months ago, probably. Yeah. So, I'm with uh, you there. Yeah, just a heads up on that, but we do have four of them. There's United Assault. There is wait, 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 Lightning Aggro. There's Deadly Discovery. <laughs> I'm reading these as we go. Arcane Tempo is the last one. Yeah. So, Will, what yep. do you think? Um, About the product overall? Product overall. Let's start there. I mean, you hit it right on the head. These are... Uh, decent decks yeah. that are competitive enough to be played in an FNM, though not as consistent mm-hmm. in my eyes, not as tailored to 4 0 yeah. than 100%. their net deck counterparts. Definitely. Um, yeah, and and that's I, I think that was the case with the lat with the last Challenger decks that they were all very they were they were just good. Yeah, you know, just yeah, yeah. solid. I, They're like. You know, your your net decks are your balanced breakfast. You got your bacon, your eggs, <laughs> milk, OJ. <laughs> this is like a bowl of bran flakes and like an apple. <laughs> It'll get you there, it's, but it's not amazing. <laughs> it's healthy, but you're going to be like, man, what that was a great a, way to. to that's not something. the breakfast I want, but all right. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's that's good. Fair. I know it's good for me. And that's exactly <laughs> what these decks are. They are good for to you. me. They feel very much like the first round iteration of the decks they ended up being. Um. Well, yes and no. Does that make sense, though? Because it, like instead of having like fleshed out four ofs, mm-hmm. although United Assault in particular does have mostly four ofs. But right. Right. Um, right. In the case of like an original deck list where the meta, like we just got the new standard set, you're trying different cards, you throw some one of, some two ofs in there, they feel more like that. And then what we ended up with seems uh, like the end goal. Yeah, except I think, I think that deck builders, competitive deck builders, people who know yeah. where they kind of want to go, can yeah. hedge their bets and say, all right, I really do need four of Conclave <laughs> Tribunal. It's okay, too yeah, powerful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, History of Benali is the best white card. <laughs> I should probably play a four of that. Um, uh, speaking of really like best cards, uh, mm-hmm. I will say before we get too far into this, some people were like really pissed that Teferi wasn't in this. I kept seeing stuff on like Twitter and Instagram. Like, Teferi's not in White Weenie. That's the thing. It's so like they didn't build a deck around Teferi though is what they were pissed about. Well, okay, but there is not a deck in standard right now built around Teferi. No. So you've got I mean, the Azorius and Esper control lists are the best examples of decks that have Teferi, but they mm-hmm. win in other ways. Yeah. Um Esper especially isn't necessarily like a Teferi deck. Yeah. Quote unquote. It's it, kind of just heavy removal. Yeah. I mean it's it's a solid control deck. Yeah. I don't. If you build a deck around Teferi, I think it gets gimmicky. Yeah. If you throw Teferi in one of these, I think the value is just too high. I that was kind of where I'm at. You know, it's I a, wasn't super like unhappy yeah. to not see to. I just I kept seeing like a lot of people. I think even Saffron Olive like tweeted at some people saying like chill out because like, yeah. I mean, if, like, so if you build if you give Teferi to one of these decks, you have to make it either put him in a deck that he doesn't really fit in just to put him but in then you su- people. the deck suffers so right. it's like not worth it or you put him in a control deck and yeah. they're one of the most expensive decks to build yeah. out there oh yeah so now for 30 bucks you've decreased the value of a lot of those yeah. decks you know what i mean it's just, you price it out that so doesn't it doesn't work right i in, don't think. in my opinion yeah, so yeah. i i think to <laughs> makes sense you know elsewhere yeah not in these Agreed. um that being said, I mean we can go over some of the some of the specifics in the decks because like I mean they're good. They are good. They're they're good. they're full of fiber. They're gonna get you there, but <laughs> you know you need to add some other stuff. Full of fiber. Uh, so United Assault is our first uh, challenger deck we'll talk about. So this is the White Weenie. Yep. Um, and it is pretty much uh, what you'd expect from a White Weenie shell. Um, however, it being standard legal, you see some of the really tasty removal. That white gets right now conclave tribunal uh the delicious history of banalia <laughs> i'm really hungry i didn't realize before sitting down i have some m&ms here if you want some Ooh, baby uh <laughs> i'm gonna resist the temptation to eat while we podcast um uh history of banalia you see two legion legions landing just uh a sneaky card left over from ixalan that, that's just still doing work um and a lot of good stuff yep uh healer's hawk um, that one's not that good. Scar, uh, Sky March <laughs> Aspirant, uh, Johnny's Pride Mate is interesting because not all of these decks go with a life gain route. Um, 
I do like the life gain route, though. I will pr- say. Pride Mate's a very solid card. Yeah. I think it's great, but not every deck, I think, has the Pride Mate It just Mate provides anymore, such an early game threat. I will no, say, you're right, but... though. It does provide such an early game threat, though, yeah. that it's like... I think when uh, mm. when Core 2019 came out... Yes. Uh, didn't Wait, you and I build like a White Weenie life gain deck? We did. And then we never actually like put it together and played with it, but we did... We came up with a list. We, it was, you know what it was? What was it was it? a mono white uh, life gain horsey list. It was. It was the horse list. With the shield mare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shield mare and. That was um, a pretty sweet card, actually. And the angel. Mm-mm. The angel, yeah, yeah. yes. But the then also the angel. big, the big horse from. From Ixalan stuff. Was right? that Ixalan or was that uh, Amaket? Oh, uh, it was Amon Kata. Yeah. 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 Which is why we never put it together. That's why we never put it together. Things are coming together, guys. Right. Anyway, this deck's pretty good. <laughs> yes, uh, this deck's pretty good. It does have four Benelish Marshall, which is yep. pretty flagship right now for yeah, this. So. That's the that's the indicator to me that this deck is a little bit more serious. Um yeah. White Weenie always needs its um uh Lord effects. And yep. Benelish Marshall and Benalia being in there. Uh, really give it some teeth, you know. Yeah. That's that's what makes this deck aggressive and gives it legs. Um, so I like it. It does have a sideboard. It does run. Ooh, it's got the fourth conclave for everything on the sideboard. Uh, Megusta. Yeah, that's Megusta actually really that. sweet. Um, three Knight of Grace, two Mega Stands, three Shield Mares. All right, so the sideboard is actually tailored pretty well to um, to deal with some stuff. Yeah, to fix some of its more uh, glaring mistakes. I think. Well, yeah. mistakes might not be fair, but. Um, Weaknesses, yeah, weaknesses, definitely. Um, so yeah, sideboard is. I think I think I like the sideboard better than the main board. Uh, I'm gonna be of. honest, only because um, this respects the meta more than this. Definitely respects. I mean, it gives does. you answers to most things, which is right. really really solid. This was based also off of a uh, a list by LSV, uh, right? That was pretty good. Yeah, almost got him there. I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> At uh, what point do you just? I just want to know what he was thinking when he had five cards, yeah. and he was like, "I gotta go to four. I, I, mean, I want to know the logic that, that got him there. That has to feel terrible. All right, uh, the next deck we're gonna talk about is the Lightning Aggro deck, and this, if I can just say, of these decks, <laughs> I think this is my favorite because, it's, as you said, uh, and you sold me on this, it's very, very, very close to like yeah. the actual just red deck wins yeah. for standard it's the closest i think yeah. you don't see rekindling phoenix often anymore it is a one of and that is more common than yeah. i think not at all but usually it is also sideboarded um you will see more lava coil it's because there are more scary things right mm-hmm. now that you do need to simply remove for good um, a one of Banefire is pretty standard. Um, again, I think oftentimes that could also be sideboarded. Just um, deals well with control list. Exactly. And finishes Ex- the game. Exactly. In a lot of cases. That's the that's the thing. So yeah. you see Banefire. This is the this is the like the little Taylor calls that yeah. um that are interesting to me. Just putting yeah, it on yeah. board. Um, but then you get to the creature list and it's pretty much exactly what we'd expect <laughs> for uh, most things chain whirler pyromancer runaway steamkin a lava runner uh the little firebrand goblin dude so it's it four amazes of, me that over. they put four chain whirlers in here um uh it's i think it's a really gutsy call it is um, right like because chain whirler was the card that really made these decks so mean yeah um until experimental frenzy yeah but well. um but like yeah. just to throw four chain world, like yeah here you go have them all i mean that's what you do in the, in the red decks but i mean that is what you do but yeah, like yeah. out of a box <clears throat> deck like I know. that's pretty uh i respect it i'm into it yeah um and then you still get you mean four shocks four lightning strikes four wizards lightning like this this on its own without any changes is already set up to beat a, a number of decks oh yeah in the meta 100%. just based on you know it being the red deck yeah, yeah. um it has fallen off, as we've seen. I mean, yeah. the Golgari decks are stronger now. The Sultai decks, aka Golgari with a Drake, uh, <laughs> are st- like they were built to beat this, and yeah. then nothing so far has you know come out on top. Yeah, um, it will have a have a rough time, I think, with some control lists because mm-hmm. there is so much good removal right yeah. now in black and white as well. Um, so we see so many sweepers out there too. Yeah, we see red deck trending down a little bit more in that instance, but. Uh, that being said, it's still... I mean, it's know. still a very potent deck, yeah, yeah. for sure. Absolutely. Um, with Experimental Frenzy, I believe, kind of just getting you out from under 
control stuff. You oh, know? yeah. You don't really run out of cards with Experimental Frenzy. Exactly. Um, it keeps the momentum. It was the replacement yeah. to, what was it, Bomat Courier, basically, yeah. that kept in the previous mm-hmm. meta. Right. Kind of kept things moving forward. Experimental Frenzy basically is a slower version of that. Yeah. As in, it just doesn't come down as easy, as, as quickly. Right. right. Uh, more I don't, consistent, though, I, don't I know that. Say. I don't know what I like more, because you can't kill... Experimental Frenzy with removal, except exactly. for enchantment removal. Like so. I, I think I don't know because you don't get the payoff Although, wait off a of minute. the courier Can't you until conclave later. Tribunal, or is it you only can, creatures? I think it's permanence, right? I think it's permanence. Yeah, target non-land permanent. Yeah. Um. So I mean, there is removal for it, but I do think I like the the experimental frenzy because turn four is like the perfect turn for can like for a red hitting something to, like yeah, that yeah. you know what i mean like a bomat courier while good still has to swing in then you still have to sack it like it, right. if it dies you it's just clunkier. lose those cards yeah experimental frenzy clunkier. just does what it does you don't have to have another step for it to start exactly. doing experimental frenzy stuff exactly so it's great um, um yeah the red deck i think is probably the best yeah out of them for steamkin is really nice yeah too. i think well the best in terms of the closest to what you can expect from right, that deck. Right. Um, in the meta right now, don't like I said, it's not necessarily in its strongest place. Yeah. Agreed. Cool. Uh so the next one here is Deadly Discovery, which is very mm-hmm. much based off of the Golgari aggro list. Yep, it basically 100%. is that. Um just I would say the biggest hit with this one, and we did talk about this before we started this episode, is the removal hit. Yeah, um, it's missing so much of its premium it removal. It really is. Uh I mean well, the biggest one, Vraska's Contempt is really big in my mind. Right. Ritual of Soot is also quite big. Right. Uh, uh, Assassin's Trophy as Assassin's well. Trophy is huge. <clears throat> uh, but it does also still have a lot of the key pieces. I mean, we do still see... We have Vraska Relic Seeker. Not the best Vraska, but it is very powerful. Sure. Uh, but we do still see uh, Jade Light Rangers. We have the Wild Growth Walkers, which... I think we tended to shy away from a little bit. Yeah, so Wild Growth Walker um, was a card that when this deck started in Standard and started its heyday, it was four of main board all the time, mm-hmm. but just about. Mm-hmm. Uh, nowadays, it is sideboarded yeah. um, because it's not, again, with red decks falling off, it's not as useful Yeah. because that's the card that really gave it uh, such... Uh, an advantage against red yeah, decks the life gain and then just outpowering everything right. where we see though the games are going a little bit later now with green being mm-hmm. more prominent in the meta the the walker just isn't uh dangerous enough in right. a lot of instances sure right. they still grow but yeah, yeah. um you are really just trying to ramp more mm-hmm. into a more powerful board overall that and crisis then, though exactly and then eventually um, your hydroid crisis yeah, yeah. so uh, uh, but walkers, we do still yeah. have a lot of the same kind of mechanics going on. There's the explore sure. stuff going, and then we do have things like Fine Broker and Fine Finality to kind of bring stuff back, recur everything. Right. Uh, and then Plague Crafter just for some value in this one, which is only a one of. It's a little weird. But right. uh, the removal package in this, and this again, this is where it, it really takes the biggest hit. It does have four cast down, which I think is fair. I think it's yeah, decent. I, I don't know that you need four. Right. Um, cast down to me is... A card that I didn't want to like. Yeah. Um, but it it turns out it's pretty good. It's pretty um, good. It's just um, I think it's a worse Doom Blade in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, I mean that's exactly um, what it is. Well, I mean I guess it hits black stuff, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but then they also threw in Eldest Reborn, which as you mentioned yeah. usually is either a one of or like a sideboard kind of card. Yeah. Um, but These... because they couldn't throw in a ton of removal. Yeah, the Eldest Reborn is really. It was the card that these decks put in to kind of finish a game that was stalling, or yeah. if, or if there was a lock or something like that, because it is a, uh, a basically a three spell clock. Yeah. Um. So Elders were born a great card, but you didn't see oftentimes more than one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the biggest thing for the um Golgari deck is that the numbers in the <laughs> cards uh, aren't really quality if you want to make it playable. Yeah. Um. So the things like two Jade Light Ranger. Jade Light Ranger is pretty key here. Yeah. Uh, one Plague Crafter. Like if you're gonna throw it in <laughs> at all, I think you need it more than once. Yeah. Um, to me, too many Eldest Reborn. Uh, I'm not about it. Yeah. And then oh, I didn't actually look at. Well, this is the only. This is the first two color thing we have, but mm-hmm. we also only have one Overgrown Tomb. Yeah. Um, I think that makes sense. That's a pretty like, a pricey card. Yeah, like you don't. It's good to have it, but you don't want a, a playset and something like this. I don't right, think right, you, right. I think it, it doesn't make sense to print a four of Overgrown Tomb. Um, um, they do, of course, throw Guild Gates in there, and they actually right. do have two Woodland Cemetery, which isn't terrible. I mean, it's like an it 
kind of a budget version. Right. It is. Yeah, definitely. I think it's fine. Um, um, so don't I'm like okay the go gates it. really, but no, I mean, it's just a cheap it's way not, of yeah, throwing it too, in there. So. Like it's not too, right. um, but yeah, so overall this one just seems like it's a little too spread out. It doesn't feel right. focused enough uh, according to the main list that we usually saw. So not, sure. a, I mean, it's good, but it's not, well, great. it's not as, I, I don't know about focus. It's not as, um, and that's the the next problem that Arcane Tempo is going to have. It's yeah. not as uh, consistent because you don't right. have your removal. You're not able to really like Capitalize protect on your stuff. board. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. No, definitely. Uh, and like anyway. you said, Arcane Tempo very similar. Uh, yeah. It does have a lot of the pieces that we see in like the Is It style decks. I yes. mean, we've got four of Electromancers, four of Crackling Drake. Yeah, uh, Electromancer. Not a card that we always see as a four of, but uh, in this kind of thing, in this kind of product, I'm kind of okay with it. Um, yeah, like it's fine for a budget. Yeah. Like it's, a, it's a card that impacts the rest of your deck, and if you're not going to put in f- even two Arclight yeah. Phoenixes, fine. Yeah. Fine. Um, it does have one Arclight Phoenix. Uh, yeah, I know it does. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it. I mean, look, they couldn't put too many in there, right? No, like, God no. Are you kidding? Two is too many for a deck like this, yeah. but uh, it is, I mean, it's a powerhouse card for this deck. So I think, like... And I've been thinking about this coming closer to this deck. I think either, I think the better option would have been to put none in there. I think it's just like a tease. Right. So you put like, Enigma Drakes, take out a few other things, put in Enigma Drakes, maybe instead of, maybe sideboard well, murmuring biscuit. Murmuring biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But here's the issue. Yeah. 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 Um, because all of these decks are worth their weight for their $30 MSRP. I will say it seems yeah, like it, I'm right? With, I would agree with that. Take out Arclight Phoenix from this deck and tell me that it's worth $30. Yeah. Okay. I don't think it is. I don't think it's even yeah, close. Yeah, I do. No. For standard right now, that's a playable deck. You could No, 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 but you could buy this deck for less than $30 oh, without the Arclight Phoenix. I so I honestly think that they had to put that in there otherwise it, the value wouldn't have been there for it. Do you see what to match that yeah, MSRP? I th- you're probably right. Like Enigma um, Drake is nothing. Like, right. <laughs> like it works. Certainly, know. it still um, works with the deck, but it's not. There, I mean, what other value cards do we have? We've got Sulfur Falls as a three of. Like yeah, that's Sulfur it. Falls Niv Mizzet's like five dollars. Is, is he? he I think so. I thought he dropped. I might be wrong. I don't know. Almost. Undoubtedly. He's definitely gonna drop now, but <laughs> oh, 110 um, percent. Um, it's fine. Um, okay, I'm kind of with. Do you, you see there. what I'm saying though? Like they kind of had to put something. Ah, uh, I guess. Like I'm not saying necessarily that was the right. No, call, that makes more but, sense. Like they had to give some value to it, other than what they already had, because I don't think that if it if it doesn't have that, it's not worth 30. Yeah, now it's worth more than 30. Well, yeah, but all of them are like right at or above, I would say. I mean, yeah. I don't, we haven't like tallied that up by any means. So don't, yeah. d- I mean, don't fact check us on that, I guess. But like, <laughs> I, it yeah, I'm seems kinda... like the value is there for each one of these. Without Arclight Phoenix, the value doesn't seem to be there for this. Sure, sure. Okay, I'm with you there. Uh, but the deck itself functions like a really bad version of the Arclight <laughs> Phoenix deck. <laughs> Because you have one Arclight Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. So, like, what you want to be doing isn't as powerful Yeah. when you have Lava Coil right now and a Crackling Drake right there. Yeah. Like, a Crackling Drake is, like, it turns into a giant threat, but it's pretty yeah. slow. It is pretty slow. Right? And, like, the Murmuring Mystic thing, they put two Murmuring Mystic in is, like, here's... A terrible Arclight Phoenix. It's well, like it's not. It doesn't replace different. the Arclight Phoenix, but it's you different. gain value it's a terrible off of your young sp- pyromancer. That's what exactly it what it is. But it it like changes the entire dynamic of the deck, where instead of trying I to just, just get phoenixes out, you're trying to go wide now and well, like no, do I a mean, whole different. I don't like that as much. I ca- I mean, I kind of disagree. Well, I think it's I, a bit different. It's it's different, but it just slows it down. Yeah, in well, my yeah. opinion, because I mean, you're not without Arclight Phoenix throwing it in the graveyard like yeah. you're able to and just you know start pumping out these cheap yeah. little spells you're kind of slowing down until you get out mystic so you can go wide mm. um so turn four becomes really clunky however yeah because i mean look you have four crackling drakes two murmuring murmuring mystics yeah so like are you waiting oh i see what you're saying like are you holding a lot of your stuff mm. because it's not got really enough removal to keep itself safe 
I mean, it has four lava coil, four shock, and then a beacon bolt. So it's got, what, nine pieces? Nine, but shock is so cheap and efficient to hold on to. I mean, that's you fair. You know, four opt, four radical ideas, But do you think fine. this is a, well, yeah. Dive down, you save for combat stuff. Yeah, 100%. Blink of an eye, you save also well, you as well. you save your, like, drakes or something like that with the dive downs. Exactly. And that's another thing, is I think if you're if you're playing a neutered version of Arcane, mm-hmm. or of, of the drakes, uh, you put in more dive down. Yeah. Even though it's more of a, a mono blue thing. And then yeah, Mirari yeah. conjectures here because of... Because reasons. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think they wanted to give a, uh, a legacy to everyone except for Golgari. <laughs> it was like, we didn't make a good legacy for green, did we? No. no. Okay, forget about it. It's don't fine. Even worry it's about fine. It. It's we fine. don't need it. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. They got that stupid demon thing. Uh, <clears throat> but Lovely. But like Mirari Conjecture, yeah. this, this is a card people tried to play with, but the best decks don't really have it. No. Uh, so it's the only like kind of there for fun. Do we see the Antiquities War a little bit for the blue sagas? Uh, Was that the one that we saw a little bit more of? Yeah. That I don't remember ever really seeing the conjecture that much. But no. What do I know? I, I wonder if they give you the fancy <laughs> negate. I'm just looking at the side. Do you think <laughs> there's give you that? no way they give you the fancy? Negate. Yeah, but then why is the art there? <laughs> oh like, yeah, I mean that's just. <laughs> that's dumb. bad choice on there. Uh, disdainful stroke, fiery. Looking at the sideboard now. One more yeah, yeah. crappy thing. Uh... <laughs> Entrancing Melody is interesting. It's fine. It's, like so, this deck, this deck is the weakest, I think, of them. Um, yeah, because without the Phoenix, this deck just gets like it's just way not, worse. It's not dangerous enough, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Um, your Drakes are easily killed. Uh, your Murmuring Mystic <laughs> is a really slow way to pay off spells matter. Yeah. Um, which is like because realistically, turn five is when Mystic starts going off. Yeah, because you don't have any more you don't have any more mana to play with it. Yeah, yeah. but then turn five, I mean, the expectation is that you congestion. play it on turn four and then turn five. You hopefully by that time you also have, have an electromancer out, and so you're just like yeah, 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 paying one for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But which like, is like cute. But on top of that, like, and I guess you don't need it because there is only one Arclight Phoenix. But like, you have two ways that I see to discard. Arclight Phoenix. You have Charter Course, and then you have mm-hmm. the Jump Start on Radical Idea. Yeah, and I think that's kind of it. I guess maybe is Beacon Bolt. Yeah, you can Beacon Bolt uh, or Jump Start off a of Beacon Bolt. But like, right. it just seems uh, it you seems like saying? a very like, different deck. To like me. if you're gonna make a worse <clears throat> version of this, I don't think you put it in at all. Yeah, I think it's like a red herring. Like you're not. Yeah, you don't want to get to Arclight Phoenix because then most of your deck is worse for yeah. it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, no, I agree. I feel like I've said you know what I mean a million times in this episode. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> do really I'm not like super sold on it either. Um, I do think they had to throw it in for value. <laughs> I honestly yeah, think that that's why. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, you say. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I do think, I will say, in terms of value, maybe not playability, but value, they all do seem to meet or exceed the thirty dollar MSRP as of now. Yeah, I think um, cards will obviously <clears throat> drop. Chain Whirler is gonna drop like a brick. Yeah, since there are four. There's of them. four. Uh, yeah, that is insane. Um, but I don't even know how much Chain Whirler costs right now. It's only like, I think it's like four or five bucks, but I might be wrong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think there's no way that that doesn't drop like a rock. Um, no, you're right. Speaking of that, <clears throat> did we not have a question? Yeah, well, somebody, I couldn't remember if we had already talked about this or not, because I forget things. Uh, Somebody did ask um, on Instagram, they were wondering if Arclight Phoenix, if we thought that Arclight Phoenix was going to drop in in value or in cost uh, due to it being printed in a Challenger deck. My simple answer, I don't think so. Right. I would echo that. (laughs) Um, I don't think it makes sense for someone looking to shill our like Arclight Phoenix mm-hmm. to spend thirty dollars to get what is now a twenty five dollar card. Twenty five, yeah. Around there. Um that being said, I know that this card's only going to get better. Yeah. Barring a ban in modern. So Yeah. Which we talked about that last episode, but yeah. uh so I don't I don't think it's fair to expect people to be I think selling more Phoenix now. Yeah, you know I don't mean? think so either. My my personal less even either. Yeah, my personal opinion is it may drop just like a few bucks, but I don't think I it's going to get. I don't think so. I don't think it gets below twenty for sure. No way. No way. No way. <laughs> um, there, that's like a safe bet in my opinion. But I might. I mean, 
I'm not the best at finance. I just spend money on everything because I'm bad about it. So, well, the, de- <laughs> so the demand is there oh, for yeah. Arclight Phoenix, and this is arguably another way to get it. So I think this is a great way to <laughs> cap Arclight's value. Yeah. Like it doesn't get above 30. Yes. For sure. Yeah. Um, which is fine. Um, but I don't I don't see it dropping at all. No, and the thing is, it's played in like literally every format that right, it's legal. Right, exactly. <laughs> so like, people are I mean, even testing it in, well, not even testing it, people are playing it in Legacy decks. I've seen it in Legacy a number right. of times. So, I don't know Vintage, probably not, but like, yeah, right, I think it's a little too slow for Vintage, but um, yeah. it's just so, it's just such a powerful card. I don't think that there's a way that this gets like, because of the Challenger deck in particular, mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to drop in price. Like you said, if there's right. a ban of some kind, right, right, right. that's different. Yep. Because of the Challenger deck, no. Especially yeah. because it's only a one of in the deck. Yeah, agreed. I think if they had a, even even done two of them, I could have like humored the idea that it might drop a little bit. But I don't yeah, think... Yeah, I agree. Um, at one, there's just no way. Yeah. I don't think. Right. Um, but yeah, the Challenger decks do look all pretty solid in terms of your value. They are solid enough. They're giving you fiber. Um, <laughs> so yeah. uh, I, I mean, I'm stoked about them. I'll probably pick them up just because. Of course. I mean, add it to the shelf. I have a shelf, guys. Um, but yeah, <laughs> stay so. tuned for updates on the stay shelf. Stay tuned for updates on the shelf. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, but yeah, so I'm pretty stoked about them. Um, We'll see how they pan out and where value ends, but yeah, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I think a lot of the white cards are going to dip a little bit. Yeah, Golgari as well, maybe. But that again, I don't see anyone <sighs> of the decks to buy. Golgari is not the one to me. Mm-mm. To me, it's either United Assault or the red deck. But yes. like United Assault is I the agree. best one in the meta right now. Is the thing. Yeah. <clears throat> I think I agree. Like straight out of the box. Straight out of the... Yeah, I mean... I, if you're trying to build the Soul Tie, I think you, you need, like, the Golgari one. Cause I think it's a decent the start. Are there. Yeah, but, right. like, the problem with that deck is that a lot of the cards that are there for that deck are not exactly expensive cards. Well, that's a good point. It's like, like, and th- so the ones you would take out to cast down some Elvis yeah. Reborn, most of the land... Plague Crafter, District Guide, probably the Fine Broker. I don't think that's run anymore. Um, I'm not remembering right now. Um, I mean, you have to add a couple Jade Light Rangers. Right. Uh, Lanowar Elves, you keep in there. But they're so cheap. Yeah, like a lot of this. The only thing that really isn't is probably is Overgrown tomb. tomb. Well, it's not $30. So. It's not, as it turns out. <laughs> correct, <laughs> correct, correct, uh, correct. But yeah, so I don't know. I'm kind of with you on that. No, you're, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. They look cool. That's all that the <laughs> the takeaway is. Uh, pretty excited about April twelfth. We've got a lot of like new stuff coming out soon. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna touch them probably. I will again for the shelf, but that's probably sure. it. Sure, sure. Um, I'm more so just looking forward to War of the Spark pre-release. War of the Spark is gonna be awesome. I'm so interested to see what limited is like. So yes, with the planeswalker in every pack thing, correct, that's gonna correct, correct. shake that's the things one. up that's a bit. One. That's, that's the, the one. one. That's what I need, Daddy. Um, yes, I'm right a- <laughs> <laughs> family friendly. Uh, I'm actually really excited. Also, for I'm, be, you guys know, I'm less of a standard player, but that could have been about anything. Yeah, bring me more raisin brand. Um, <laughs> raisin bring brand. that full circle. I don't, brand, it's brand, brand. You brand. I don't know. Clearly, I don't enjoy it. Um, but I'm actually really excited about Modern Horizons, too. I think that's going to be really sweet. Mm. How awesome is I that? I forgot all about Modern Horizons. That's going to be awesome. Uh, if Well, yeah, I think it's either going to be good or so good. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. If they are trending towards we're making just solid cards that are going to help out a lot of decks, yeah. I think that's great. Well, the Cabal <laughs> Therapist looks sweet. Yeah, I love it. Sarah, okay. She's fine. Whatever. Cabal therapist looks sweet. Sarah will help out. You're like, if anyone plays Weenie anymore in Modern, <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe. Hey, he- a four drop Planeswalker is like on par in my mind. Like that, I, so cost with a Planeswalker is always a big deal, right? Like Definitely. Relic Seeker we talked about is just too expensive. Like yeah, that's the problem. Cases. She's yeah, yeah, yeah. good. 
she's just too expensive sure. for like modern yeah and yeah that's how you fix a card for modern, yeah really. exactly yeah and so like four drop planeswalkers in modern yeah perfect in my opinion like that's like where i feel like is the standard for a planeswalker in modern right now i feel like sure. that's a good number sure. you know what i mean like yeah. that's a good time to play yeah well and if you have a really good turn four planeswalker like you're yeah. saying or even well lily's turn three she's probably my my other uh favorite example of this but yeah modern right now seems to be a lot of decks like trading turn fours in that yeah. turn four is if if your hand is situated to have a juicy turn four yeah fantastic you do it and you're pr you're like in a good position to jettison mm -hmm. a win uh that's not the right word not jettison because that would be the opposite you don't want to throw away a win <laughs> anyway you're doing great uh but if you have a juicy turn four, uh, the win's probably in the bag. Yeah. But so the, then the pressure's on your opponent, especially if you have a turn four planeswalker. If they can't win, yeah. Then if their turn four is just kind of answering the planeswalker, yeah. they've invested the biggest turn off, and now, you know. Yeah. No, you're right. They're good. They're I feel good that. to go. They're good to go. Um, I think yes. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, Go ahead. Cool. So we wanted to also briefly talk about the mulligan rule. Um, we mentioned it before when they decided to test it in London. We're going to call it the London mulligan rule mm -hmm. or the London mulligan, the LM. That's probably as short as we're going. The lim Limited me sources. The limerick. Um, I couldn't think that's of anything place clever. In it's not. It's not oh, okay. in London. Anyway. Um, so <laughs> Geography. <laughs> yeah. With it resolved. Really, it's like trivia. It's like <laughs> yeah, Limerick's yeah, such yeah. a small plate. Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> but it was—I think it was our shared opinion. Correct me if I'm wrong. That this was a a good change. Yes, okay. definitely. Okay. Good, yeah. Good, good. Good. I couldn't remember where we well, both landed it, on that. What I like about this is that, like, the scry thing is good. Uh, it's fine. I think it was an improvement over the previous Mulligan rule. Agreed. Um, but this just like. It takes out a little more of that like negative aspect of mulliganing. Mm -hmm. Like it gives you a few more outs, and I'm cool with that. Sure, um, I like it a lot. Yeah. So to plug another, um, not that they need plugging, but to plug another magic uh, media mogul, whatever. Yeah. Um, Channel Fireball put out a like little blurb about the London Mole. Um, it was kind of a game too, where you had a few different scenarios, a few different decks. Um, and they said, like, you're more getting two cards away. What do you yeah. pick? Yeah. Um, and, and that was, like, informative, to because I've not played with the London Mulligan. Right. I've yeah, seen yeah. it played, but... It, we really should play test it. Yeah, that's a good point. But I haven't, like, like drawn from a deck in London Mulligan yeah, or anything yeah. like that. Um, but it was, a good, it was a good way to see uh, how it benefited you, mm -hmm. really. Um, you had to consider more what your deck is trying to do. Um, and it doesn't feel, you don't feel as weak after saying, all right, well, this is, these are my options. Um, this is my best route to still secure a game. So this is what I'm going to do instead yeah. of God, I hope these four cards are going to do it. <laughs> yeah. It's these four cards are my best option. Exactly. So it's like a min max. On, you get to sculpt a little bit and that, right. that's nice. Right. So, I mean, I think it's, I think it's a lot better. Yeah. That's a lot better people. That's kind of the takeaway is that um, we both agree on that. Yeah. It's, it does seem a lot better. It just seems like. Because mulliganing, <clears throat> original mulliganing, <throat> felt just super negative, right? Like, to Always, the game. Every time. I feel, it feels terrible. Like, you know at some point that you will just lose. Everybody. Yeah, yeah, most, of, well, most of the time. Two, well, past six. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you get to a certain, like, four or five point, you're like, okay, I'm... I'm I keep whatever hand that Very drive. little <laughs> chance that but I'm But, I mean, that just win. gives more credence to your point. Like, I yeah. I don't care what I draw at five. I will keep it. That's the thing. Because, like, if you go past that, it's like, okay, I'm just if out. LSV can't beat <laughs> some dude... <laughs> Some dude playing the same deck after mulliganing to four, then yeah, I don't yeah. I don't go past five. Exactly. No, I agree. And so this just it doesn't make it feel quite as bad. It makes it a much more like it takes out the really one of the worst scenarios that can possibly happen in magic. And it doesn't eliminate it completely, but it makes it very less likely. Sure. And that's I'm all down for that. Yeah. Makes it fun. It's interesting. We just need more data. Yeah. That's all. Uh, they As also, Wizards hasn't released anything on it right. after the fact. They said they were gathering yeah. data in London. 
uh, and they were going to review it and determine if this was something that they want to implement sure. uh, worldwide mm-hmm. at some point. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we'll keep you guys posted as we learn more, but so far we have not. Yeah. This is just something that we wanted to mention. Yeah, but I'm two thumbs up. I think it's cool. 100%. Okay. Um, so let's move on. Uh, before we answer your guys' questions, we have a few that we'd like to answer. Uh, we do have our Cracker Packs sponsored by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. They're fantastic. Their Facebook page is linked down below. Oh, yeah. Feel free to follow them. They are truly a great store. Oh, yeah. Uh, Love them lots. Yeah, yeah. Awesome people. What are you doing? You get, which do you think is the scary clown or the pretty lady? Pretty lady is in your right. I don't know. Was that You're wrong. wrong. Oh, I didn't know which was the... <laughs> this is the pretty lady. Oh, okay. Uh, we do have our little Shockland deal, so um, whoever gets the most our Shockland... Our Shockland deal. At the end We're going to devote a day to charity. Yes, so. that's the plan. That's sweet. I didn't get a Shockland. Nor I got Mirror did March. I. What is... I don't even know this card. I got I Thrasher know. Threat, um, which is probably honestly the pick for limited. Let's go. Let's go through here. Uh, there's no way that's good enough and limited. That's way too slow. Um, mm, Law Mage's Binding is good. Oh, Skate Wing Spy is pretty good. Okay, so mm, this is actually kind of tough. I think Skate Wing oh, Spy. Bomb. Skate Wing Spy is probably my pick. Uh, it's just a really, really solid creature. And yeah. Adapt is always fun for a mana sync late game, so yeah. that's probably what I would pick. Um, so I my rare was Thrash and Threat, like I said, and Thrash is pretty decent removal and limited, but I also had Sphinx of the Guild Pact. Um, and a bomb with hexproof from something is just usually pretty good. Um, so I think that's the pick is Sphinx of the Guild Pact. Yeah, I think that's fair. Cool. That card's great. Yeah, um, I'm sold. Okay, so uh, again, we we posted on Instagram and just asked you guys to ask us questions. Um, we have a few interesting ones that we were. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think we have yeah, a good. short list here, so we may just do this over the span of the next few episodes. Is like both answered mm-hmm. these? I did answer some of these on Instagram already, uh, but we can go into a little more detail here, obviously. So totally. And if uh, you have a question, don't forget you can always reach out to us on any of our platforms. There you go. Except uh, for really the podcast app, I guess. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> email us. I don't know. Um, that would work. <laughs> that would work. Um, okay, so here's one that I am going to actually pose to you because I believe you have a better answer for this. Bring it on. Why are we called It Resolves? Kevin? Didn't you pick it? Uh, yes. So we are called It Resolves <laughs> because um, it is really cute. <laughs> I uh, mean, the I reality is it's just a thing people say in magic. Right. And it wasn't taken. <laughs> so we took yeah. it. <laughs> um, we didn't honestly, so we didn't have a great idea there. I have thought of a few better ones since then. How do you, wait, what? I'm going to be really mad if they're actually better. I, well, I have one that I kind of like more. What is it? So if you draw a hand that yeah. is like. If you have to explain it this much, it might not be better. No, I just want you to think about it. So you draw a hand that is like, if I get that one more card, yeah, yeah. this is the god hand. Yeah, what yeah. do you call that? The nuts. No. <laughs> that is what you call it. The greedy keep. Oh, the greedy keep. It's a greedy oh. keep. I mean, that's pretty good. The, there's a lot more like gimmicky stuff you yeah, get to do off yeah. that. I'm not sold, but it's I think a, it resolves, it's a keep. though, is like something that a lot of people just know because a oh, lot I mean, of people say, if you know something I mean? has to resolve, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like, because that's just a, if you're playing a game you against cast a blue spells, player, stuff resolves. <laughs> then uh, you have to ask, does it resolve? And they have yeah. to be like, it resolves. And it's right. like, hey, that's us. Right. We're there every it's time a- you say that. <laughs> we just pop up. <laughs> hey, hello. <laughs> Um, uh, the next card won't. Don't cast it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah. Uh, so I. I mean, you. You. I think pitched the name officially. But I. Yeah. I mean, we did a search on it, and I yeah, think. We, um, I will say I do think. Uh, Graham Stark. Who's he with? Loading Ready Run. Uh, I do think they did uh, like a video or something called It Resolves because every time like yes. I Google search our things, yeah, like a video of theirs comes up as like the second thing, but we're on top. That's all I'm saying. Loading yeah. ready run, better watch out. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, okay, so 
I, did you hand me this to pick another one? Yeah, pick a question. Uh, we can what? either what? Yeah, just for some of the some of these questions were weird, guys. I've filtered a few out. Sorry about it. Uh, no, I just can't read your handwriting. Oh um, God, so sorry. Uh, Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> I do have terrible handwriting. I can't be that. Much. Okay, how do I get up to speed after being out of the game for a while? Um. Great question. What do, do you, you want to start or you want me to? You start. I asked the question. Um, so I think f- this is what works for me mm. because I have been out of the game now like twice, I would say. Yeah. Major times that I've been out of the game. Um, the thing that helps me is just going on YouTube and like literally just watching gameplay, like going sure. to pro tour coverage, GP coverage, something mm-hmm. like that. Um, pick the format that you're interested in most Yeah. and just start there. Uh, that way you get a feel for like what's going on. Try and pick obviously the most like relevant tournament, sure. but, um, that way you get a feel for what's going on. You get a feel for the gameplay, how it's going. And then also kind of just refresh yourself on how things go, because obviously in a tournament level, things like are very structured. They have to do certain things. Like, right. It's a little bit, it's not the same as like a casual game where things can just be passed. And it's like, okay, that's understood that it's whatever in a in a Mm -hmm. tournament structure it's very much like does this resolve yes and then you know kind of go on for so i i would say that's a good place to start i would also just look at the top eight lists from the last couple tournaments Mm -hmm. and just see what decks are being played yeah um my answer just play it yeah i mean just get out there and play play, Um, so it depends if you are if you want to get up to speed in terms of I want to go to this event and smash, yeah. Oftentimes, um, that's like a limited sort of thing, mm-hmm. and not necessarily an F and M because I think a lot of people who are still grinding F and M's, um, shout out to you, uh, <laughs> they like have a little bit of an understanding of where the resources are. Yeah, but the limited aspect of the game has always been one of the most interesting to me and that's the one that i think changes all the time yeah, yeah. obviously new sets come out all that stuff um well the resources are out there like kevin said so uh i have mtg goldfish uh bookmarked on my computer it's the <laughs> first favorite on my bar so uh when i was first playing and someone introduced me to all the like data gathering sites and the metrics and this and that mtg yeah, yeah. top eight etc i was like wait all this is online like everybody knows it's all available to you now yeah that's the great thing about it is that there is so many resources so you can you can pull up the latest tournament (laughs) on mtg top eight and just look at the good decks yeah that's not always going to give you an understanding as to why those decks are the best so then you look to youtube yeah in my opinion see how it's being played see people play with it whether that's it footage of of fnm some people Mm -hmm. are still recording stuff like that and putting it on there which is awesome thank you um or actual pro coverage yeah um understanding why these decks are quote unquote the best and yeah. good i think is that's really probably paramount into understanding a meta yeah because if you don't know why the best deck is the best and you don't want to play it mm-hmm. you don't know how to beat it i'll say this too um this is a little bit like uh detailed i guess but mm. something that i do occasionally uh, mm. especially with modern because i'm more interested in modern than most formats sure is like if i'm watching tournament coverage or something like that of like top eight you know whatever mm-hmm. um i'll like pause in between after they draw their card for a turn i'll like pick one of the players yeah yeah, yeah. draw they draw their card it shows you their hand most of the time as they're going through mm-hmm. and so then i'm like okay if i have the same information this person has what is my play this turn i like that and just see if they like end up doing the same thing or if they show if they choose a better line which yeah. oftentimes they do obviously <laughs> that's why they're there and i'm not but um you know do that kind of a thing just to like mentally kind of test yourself a little bit as you're going through and learning these decks that yeah. i mean that helps me a good bit but yeah uh yeah so i mean you can always rely on people who are more experienced in yeah. some way even if it's like uh secondhand through the internet yeah. in a way so um, i mean best thing you can do is just sit down and play with some friends like that's a good easy sure. end, and then move up to fnm and then yeah. do your whole thing definitely um I'm going to ask a really easy question really quick because it's relevant uh, and I'm going to go ahead and answer it as well. Uh, How do we choose giveaway winners? I say this is relevant because we do have a giveaway going on right now. If you're interested, uh, it is on Instagram. All you have to do is follow us uh, and then repost the giveaway post. 
uh, which is just on our page. You can just screenshot it, do something like that. But yeah. uh, you're entered to win a Ravnica Allegiance bundle uh, completely for free. If you're out of the U.S., uh, you can still enter. We just can't actually ship it to you, so we'll PayPal you the value. Uh, but the way that we actually pick giveaway winners is we keep a running tally uh, of everyone that actually enters. So anyone that tags us, uh, comments with us in there, whatever you guys do, uh, we do keep a running numbered list. And then basically what I do at the very end uh, is gather the last few people and then do a random number, number generator for however many entries that we've got. And it just selects somebody at random. That way it's completely out of our hands. Uh, so we don't have any bias at all when picking right. the winners. Right, right. Uh, just it, it makes it easy. It keeps us out of the out of the fray a little bit. Uh, and that usually works pretty well. Yeah. Um, I'm with you there. Okay. Um, last? Yeah, let's yeah, make this the last one. one. Do you want to go to a five, a nice round number, or keep it at four? You pick, man. We're going to ask this and see where we're at. Uh, okay. So... Good substitute for fetch lands. So this is kind of an unfair answer maybe for you because I feel like if you're asking this, you're looking for a substitute mm. for a deck. And if you're going budget, that's fine. There's a bunch of, a bunch of, I think, okay yeah. lands you can put in a budget deck. But if you, I don't, I don't want to harsh anyone's mellow. If you're looking to build a deck, that you can play fetch lands in so all right it's in modern and mm -hmm. beyond uh you should probably play fetch lands if you want it to win <laughs> yeah here's why yeah uh so when i build a deck i'm always looking at if if there's cards that offer me draw potential for other cards that's cool so like cards like um uh Oh, we just talked about it maybe being banned. It's red. Faith is looting. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Cards like that. If I'm in red and I think I need to speed up uh, my game or get to something, if I'm digging, Faith is looting has to be in there. So now I think, okay, Faith is looting, yes, it's a card in my deck, but that increases my draw potential for all these other cards based on how many copies I have in my deck, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Cool. Uh, with fetch lands, if you are in more than two colors, even if you're in two colors, really, but if you're in more than two, fetch lands are paramount. Yeah. For hitting all of your colors when you need them mm -hmm. and being able to control what you can cast on time is super not only that but like i mean there are small instances where like fetch lands do more than just fetch out a well i mean it thins your deck That's, fetches you out of land right but it also like shuffles your deck so mm -hmm. you've got synergies that go along with that so if you've sure. scried something to the top or the bottom or something like you you have that shuffle effect um there's a lot of really interesting kind of nuances to the game that as you play it sure. with fetch lands, you'll kind of pick up on them. Sure. Um, so they're more than just, just lands. fetch lands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the deck thinning um, to me was the biggest one. Yeah. Um, and the most it, consistent. Yeah. I mean, you see it in uh, what my favorite example, I think might be the a modern version of red deck wins where it only runs like eight mountains yeah. and four fetch lands. Yeah. yeah. Um, like they're on the face of it, you're like, why does this even run fetch lands? But right. then if you think of it, it's like it's less cards in your deck. Yeah, exactly. It's that you it. land you would have drawn is now, yeah. you know, a lightning bolt or exactly. something. Um, and so it increases increases the draw potential for other cards mm -hmm. um, indirectly, albeit. Um, but yeah, fetch lands add so much nuance to your deck that yeah, is, yeah. it's crisp. I will say if you are somebody who's looking to play like commander or something like that, and you actually do want like budget options. Uh, there yeah. is a cycle. There's only five of them, but there is a cycle of Mirage uh, fetch lands that are slow. They come into play tapped, but mm -hmm. they have the exact same effect as actual fetch lands. So you can still fetch out dual lands like shock lands, dual lands, things like that. Sure. Um, nine times out of ten, if you are playing or not trying to play fetch lands, you may not be able to also afford shock lands. I know they're cheaper, but yeah. they are still a little bit up there mm -hmm. in price. Uh, so if you're playing with basic lands, Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expanse. Yeah, that's true. All perfectly fine. Um, but they, they're they just not nearly as good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> it. the takeaway. Right. Um, one more or no? Yeah, let's do it. All right. You pick I have it, to Kev. pick one, though. Oh, God. Stall. Um, yeah. Fetch lands are cool. <laughs> uh, okay, I know which one. I don't know. Okay. Uh, favorite weird tribe. We'll end on a funny one. And I will say uh, they did give the... Um, mm like the example of like horses and shamans and stuff like that yeah, yeah and i remember yeah, yeah, what yeah, i put yeah. but i want to see if you'll pick 
what I put. So you you say first. Well, we had a we had a running <laughs> joke for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh about whale tribal yeah <laughs> that's exactly what <laughs> i said and that's kind of fun um but favorite weird tribe um i'm trying to think of one because my favorite tribes are probably like vampires slivers slivers is good slivers are great yeah. i like the synergy in zombies a lot too zombies might be yeah it. um I actually like elves a lot. The way elves plays is fun. Yeah. But the weird tribe. Oh. Bird. <laughs> bird is my favorite Just weird bird. tribe. <laughs> well, because you get so many things that like buff <laughs> flying creatures. Like there are lords for. Yeah. There's bird like there's bird lords. There are bird lords. <laughs> yeah. A lot of them are kind of old. You got like Avon squires yeah, and Avon like seekers super, and Avon stuff. Super obscure stuff. But like. There's bird soldiers all over the place. Yeah. There's freaking squadron hawks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freaking healers hawks. Yep. Freaking regular hawks, <laughs> I'm going to guess. Do you remember <laughs> when I tried to make peck? No, griffin tribal a thing. Griffin tribal. I was it, wondering if you would say that. It's not a thing. Don't try it. No, it's real bad. Um, there are also griffin lords, if I'm not yep, mistaken. There though. is one good griffin lord in terms of like... <laughs> four griffins yeah okay <laughs> yep <laughs> yeah so griffin tribal bird tribal though i think is my fave bird tribal is pretty in fun. terms of like this is one that's like all right yeah i see you bird tribal i see you you could <laughs> maybe win a game oh i was gonna say something real funny that i can't say no um <laughs> uh yeah i i think i said whale tribal on yeah. uh, instagram just because of our running joke i think it was whales versus crabs whales versus we crabs that's do. exactly it because krill is not a tribe <laughs> hey comment below if you want to see whales versus crabs game <laughs> i can only go well look if we get if we get some oh. number of comments <laughs> literally any number of comments <laughs> then crabs versus whales is going to be the next video um no is there anything else you wanted to talk about going on right now in your life will before we uh end this episode nope that was definitive (laughs) (laughs) i'm uh uh we should mention very quickly um i mentioned this in the weekly ramble the last of the weekly rambles uh on thursday um last thursday but we are doing a different format for the month of april and a, a foreseeable future. Oh yeah, that's uh, we important. We completely forgot to mention that, but uh, we are doing a different format. The podcast itself will be here every other week, most mm-hmm. likely. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to mm-hmm. see how that goes for a little while. We do have other videos in place uh, that we want to put on, in yeah. the Wednesday slot on the off weeks. Yeah, uh, what's what? We'll make like a, a wrap up post at some point yeah, or a video yeah. or about it. Really, um, what it comes down to is, I mean, there's the same amount of content. The type is changing a little bit. We just want to branch out. Yeah. Is essentially we're going we to branch to. out and hopefully do it in a way that's easier on us that will yeah. ensure that we can make higher quality stuff. That's the takeaway. Um, we're Does also filling out up? on different uh, social media platforms. So if you're not already mm-hmm. following our stuff, you should. Links are down below. You may is what he meant to say. No, I meant what I, I said. I apologize for my friends. Look, I'm uh, forceful about it. Egregious behavior. I know what I said. Um, <laughs> it's good content. I'm making it. Yep. Be my friend. Um, <laughs> I refuse, Kevin. We are business partners. We are business more. partners only for this highly successful business. Hey, um, I'll fight you. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so just be on the lookout. Mm-hmm. April, we are going to be switching things up a little right. bit, and we will. I'm sure we'll post something about it, so don't worry. Yes, 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 um, yes, yes, yes. But yeah, I don't think there's anything else that we need to talk about. No, nope. I don't think so. I think I'm good. Yeah, I think I'm good, yeah, too. As good so as good can be. Guys, thank you so much for watching or listening, I should say, to this episode of the It Resolves podcast. We're super excited that you joined us for this one. Um, Rambles. (laughs) Right. Bye. My My name's Kevin. My name is Will. This has been It Resolves.